So in this example, we have a hand-thrown pot pottery shop manufactures plates, cups, and vases. Each plate requires four ounces of clay, six minutes of shaping, and five minutes of painting. Each cup requires four ounces of clay, five minutes of shaping, and three minutes of painting. Each vase requires three ounces of clay, four minutes of shaping, and four minutes of painting. This week, the shop has 165 pounds of clay, 59 hours of skilled labor for shaping, and 46 hours of skilled labor for painting. So if we want to figure out if the manager wishes to use all these resources fully, we want to see how much of each product should the shop produce. Now this one's a little bit more involved than some of the other ones and we have to be careful. So let's first define our variables. We can use X, Y, and Z, but I like to use more relevant variables. So we have the number of plates, cups, and vases are what we're looking for. So we're saying how many plates, so we'll call that P, is the number of plates C will be the number of cups, and V will be the number of vases. So we have a lot of information floating around here. And what we want to realize is that for each of the products, there are different requirements of making them. You have the amount of clay required, you have the amount of shaping required, you have the amount of painting required. So we can organize the amount of shaping clay and painting required into different equations. So let's first take a look at the amount of clay required. So we're going to make a clay equation here. So to write out the total amount of clay required, for example, for the plates, each plate requires four ounces of clay. So if we have P number of plates, the total amount of clay required for the plates is four times P. That's the total amount of clay required for the plates. And then for the cups, the total amount of clay required for the cups is four ounces of clay per cup. So that's four times the number of cups. And then total ounces of clay required for the vases is three ounces of clay per vase. So that's three times the number of vases. And the total amount of clay that we have is 165 pounds. Now be careful is that we have on the left here, this is all in ounces and we're doing total amount. So we should add all these. This is all in ounces on the left, but this is in pounds. So these are ounces and this is in pounds. So we want everything to be in the same form in the same unit. So we want to turn pounds into ounces. So we're taking 165 and multiplying it by 16 because there are 16 ounces in a pound. And so we want to turn everything into ounces. So we have the clay equation is four times P plus four times C plus three times V is equal to 165 times 16 is 2,640. So this is our clay equation. Now let's do our shaping equation. It's going to be very similar, but now the unit is in time. In particular, we have minutes, but we also have hours. So again, we just want to make sure that we have everything in the same unit. And it's usually easier to get everything in minutes rather than get everything in hours. So there are six minutes of shaping for each plate. So that's six times the number of plates. That's the total number of shaping required for all the plates. And then there's five minutes of shaping for each cup. So the total amount of shaping for all the cups is five times C. And then there are four minutes of shaping for each vase. So the total amount of minutes for shaping all the vases is four times V. And this is equal to the amount of time we have for shaping is 59 hours, but 59 is in hours. So we want to turn that into minutes. So we multiply 59 times 60 to turn it into minutes and we get 3,540 minutes. So it's all in minutes now. And then for the painting, it's very similar as the shaping it's given in time. We have five minutes of painting for each plate. So that's five times P is the total number of painting minutes for all the plates and three minutes of painting for each cup. So this is three times C is the total number of minutes for painting the cups plus four times V because there's four minutes for each vase is the total number of minutes for painting the vases. And we want to turn the 46 hours of labor for painting in two minutes. So we're doing 46 times 60 
to get the total number of minutes is 2760. Now we have these three equations here and let's try to set it up using our previous setup. Rather than doing the REF form, let's set it up into the matrix equation. So we have the coefficient matrix A is equal to, so we set up equation by equation. So each row is an equation. We have four, so this is P, and then we have four, this is C, and then we have three, this is V. And so this is the coefficient matrix, and that's all we need for the setup for the first row. And the second row is the second equation, which is six, five, four, and then the last equation is five, three, four. So that's the A, and then the B is equal to the result matrix. So this is 2,640, 3,540, and 2,760. And the variable matrix, call that X. Well, that is the variables that we have. So that's the P, C, and V. And to solve for X, we have X is equal to A inverse times B. And we can just do this in the calculator. So we have our two matrices here, the A and the B. And so all we need to do is A inverse times B. And we get our result here. This is what the result is of the variable matrix. So 180, 300, 240. So we have the variable matrix, which is P, C, V, is equal to the result of this product here, which is 180, 300, and 240. And this means we have P is equal to 180, which is plates. C, the number of cups, is 300. And V, the number of vases, is 240 vases. And this is how we get all the resources used up of what we have. The number of pounds of clay and the number of hours for skilled labor and the amount of hours for painting. So in this example, we're investing money again. We have $10,000 to invest and decide to split, them, split it up among three accounts, one paying 5%, 10%, and the other paying 8% interest annually. You want to get $1,400 interest income annually. For risk purposes, you'd like to have twice, twice as much in the 5% account as in the 10% account. So we want to see how should you invest in each of these accounts. So let's write this out. We have X, Y, and Z for our variables. And so we're looking at how much we should invest into each account. So we have X is the money in the 5% account. Y is the money in the 10% account. And Z will be the money in the 8% account. So we have different scenarios here. The first one is we have $10,000 to invest meaning we're going to invest all this money. So the amount of money invested in X or in the 5% account, the amount of money invested in the 10% account, the amount of money invested in the 8% account will all add up to 10,000. So we have X plus Y plus Z is equal to 10,000. And then we also have, we want to get $1,400 interest income annually. So the $1,400 interest to get the total amount of interest in each account, the amount of interest in the 5% account is 0 0.05 times X, because that gives you how much interest you get from the 5% account. So this is 0 0.05 times X, plus the amount of interest from the 10% account is 0.10 or 0.1 times Y, and the amount of interest in the 8% of account is 0 0.08 times Z. And this should all add up to 1,400. And now we have this other part to reduce the risk. You want twice as much in the 5% account as in the 10% account. So the twice as much line. So you want the amount in the 5% account. So X is equal to twice as much as in the 10% account, so two times Y. So twice as much as the 10% account should be how much you have in the 5% account. But again, we need for this to work out, we need all the variables on the same side. So let's subtract the two Y over. 
and we have x minus 2y is equal to 0. So these are the different equations that we have. So we have our equations that we can set up into the matrix form. Now let's do this with the RREF form, the reduced row echelon form, rather than the inverse form that we saw above, just so we can get practice with both. So in the reduced row echelon form, we set it up all into one big matrix. And so that big matrix, we have the first equation, it's called this one. This is the x plus y plus z is equal to 10,000. So remember the columns represent the different variable coefficients. So we got x, y, and z, and then the equals, the constant coefficient. And so this is the first equation in the first row. The coefficient of x is 1, the coefficient of y is 1, the coefficient of z is 1, and the constant coefficient on the other side of the equation is 10,000. And then the second equation we have, the coefficient of x is 0 0.05, and then 0.1, and then 0 0.08, and the constant coefficient on the other side of the equal sign is 1,400. And then the last equation is right here. So this is x minus 2y is equal to 0. So x is 1, y is negative 2, z is 0, and the constant coefficient is 0. So let's put this into the calculator and do r, r, e, f of a, if we call this matrix a. So we have the matrix typed out here. It is a 3 by 4, so you can enter all those in by just doing the new matrix. And we're just doing r, r, e, f of a, and this is the result we get. So it is ones all the way in the diagonal, so that's good. And we have some values here on the constant coefficient sides, so we'll solve for those and write it all out. So the result was 1, 0, 0, negative 30,000, 0, 1, 0, negative 15,000, and 0, 0, 1, 55,000. And so what this is saying, remember this is x, y, and z. So we're saying x is equal to negative $30,000. Y is equal to negative $15,000. And z is equal to $55,000. But think about this result here. We have negative money to invest. So this doesn't really make sense in this context. So the solution does not make sense in this context. So no solution in this context because we can't really invest negative money.